This videotape will demonstrate how to use the steady rest and follower rest to support workpieces on the lathe. Long slender workpieces or pieces that are held with large overhang tend to flex away from the tool under cutting pressure. In these cases, the work must have additional support from a steady rest or follower rest. With these accessories to maintain the rigidity of the setup, the operator can perform precision operations such as turning, threading, facing, drilling, and boring that would otherwise be impossible. After viewing this videotape, you should be able to write down the safety precautions to be observed when machining on the lathe using the steady rest and follower rest, and describe the procedures for setting up the lathe and machining using the steady rest and follower rest. These safety precautions should be observed. Always wear safety glasses. Remove rings, watches, and other jewelry. And keep sleeves above the elbows. When machining long pieces on the lathe, it is important to use the proper cutting speeds and feeds and to use a rigid setup. The steady rest, sometimes called a center rest, consists of a frame and three adjustable jaws which support the work at some point along its axis. The overarm is hinged so the work can be inserted and removed without disturbing the jaw adjustment. This feature is important in machining duplicate pieces. The overarm is clamped in place with a screw and the jaws are adjusted with adjustment screws. When the jaw adjustments are correct, each jaw is locked in place with a separate locking nut. The jaws are tipped with bronze, plastic, or ball bearing rollers. The steady rest can be used to prevent springing or deflection of slender work, to furnish auxiliary support to permit taking a heavier cut, or to support the work for drilling, boring, or threading operations. It can be used on work held in a chuck, or work held between centers. The workpiece must have a concentric bearing surface where the jaws of the steady rest can be applied. This surface can be machined into the work diameter. Or on irregular or small pieces, it can be provided by a cat's head. The adjusting screws of the cat's head adapted to the irregular or small piece. Using a dial indicator on the bearing surface, you can true the cat's head by rotating the work by hand and adjusting the screws. Once the work has a true bearing surface, the jaws are adjusted to it. The jaws cannot be clamped too tightly or they will mar the bearing surface. This slight clearance is also necessary for lubrication. To set up the steady rest, Mount and true the work in a chuck or between centers. Turn a concentric bearing surface on the work at the point where the center rest jaws are to be applied. File and polish the bearing surface. Wipe the surface free of any abrasives. Clean the ways and the base of the steady rest as well. Place paper between the ways of the lathe and the steady rest to protect the ways and prevent slipping. Mount and clamp the steady rest in position. Loosen the jaw locking screws and using a piece of cellophane or a one thousandth feeler gauge, adjust the jaws to a slight drag. Then tighten the jaw locking screws. This should allow approximately one thousandth between each jaw and the work. Lubricate the jaws and the bearing surface with a light film of lubricating oil. Start the lathe and note whether or not the lubricant is rubbed off as the work revolves under the jaws. If any of the jaws rub the film of lubricant off the bearing surface, readjust the clearance. The steady rest is now set up properly and machining operations such as drilling can be performed as required. 
The follower rest can be used on long or slender shafts that may be sprung out of alignment under cutting pressure. A follower rest mounts on the carriage of the lathe and moves with the tool, backing up the work opposite the point of the tool. Follower rests have two adjustable supporting jaws, one above the work to prevent the tendency to climb on the tool, and the other behind the work to counter the horizontal thrust of the tool. Each jaw has an adjusting screw and locking screw. The cutting tool is set up to proceed or follow the jaws of the follower rest. The jaw adjustments are made the same as for the steady rest. A follower rest is very useful in machining small diameters. To use the follower rest, mount it on the carriage. Mount the work between centers or in a chuck supported by the tailstock center. Set up the tool and take a cut for a short distance from the tailstock end of the work. Adjust the follower rest jaws to the machine surface of the work with cellophane or a one thousandth feeler gauge. Considerable care should be taken in adjusting the jaws since the work must turn freely but without play. When the jaws are adjusted correctly, continue the cut, applying cutting lubricant ahead of the follower rest jaws and the cutting tool. When the cut has been completed to length, use the carriage to bring the tool back to the starting point. If more than one cut is required, start the cut and reset the jaws of the follower rest to the new diameter. If more cuts are required, the follower rest jaws must be adjusted after each cut. When using the follower rest in threading, one adjustment of the jaws is sufficient since each pass merely cuts threads into the work and does not change the outer diameter of the workpiece. After each threading pass, make sure that the threads do not have burrs on them which could damage the jaws of the follower rest. If a workpiece is not equipped with center holes, a steady rest can be used to support the center of the work. The follower rest can then be used opposite the tool to begin machining on the tailstock end of the work. For further machining, the steady rest can be moved to the outer end of the work and the operation completed. To review, you should now be able to write down the safety precautions to observe in using a steady rest and follower rest, and the procedures for setting up the lathe and machining using the steady rest and follower rest. The steady rest and follower rest make it possible to perform many precision machining operations on the lathe that would otherwise be impossible. Familiarity with these accessories will enable the machinist to take advantage of the versatility of the engine lathe.